Hello everybody and welcome back to another round of World Talks here on TVP World. My name is Don Arleth. As Poland and Ukraine prepare for the arrival of India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, many questions are arise as to the true intent and the role that the leader of the world's most populous country can play in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. So without further ado, let's dive into this topic with our guest, Malgorzata Bonikowska, President of the Center for International Relations. Hello and thank you for joining us on World Talks. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yes. Now, uh, from the perspective of the Indian leader, what is he looking to accomplish here in Poland and then when he travels to Ukraine on Friday? Well, it's a very good coincidence that it happens just this year because it's the 70th anniversary of a bilateral <clears throat> India relations. Uh, and it just makes a difference now because India is growing in uh, power, and but also Poland in our European regional scale is growing in power. We are just heading towards the Polish presidency to the EU Council next year, first half, and India knows it. So for the Indian Prime Minister, uh, it is the first visit after 40 years. Very, very long gap. And it's a high time from the Indian perspective to reopen the chapter with Central Eastern Europe, especially Poland, uh, with the uh, with a very constructive message that these countries should definitely do many more things together, uh, unlike earlier. Right. Well, Poland seems to be the most important um, country here in this region, in Central and Eastern Europe, for India. The trade relationship has blossomed somewhat. Uh, it grows at a rate of about 12 to 15 percent year on year. Uh, of course, the balance of trade is in favor of India. Uh, but besides that, are there any other bilateral issues that are uh, most likely going to be raised between Prime Minister Tusk or uh, most likely with Prime Minister Tusk rather than uh, President Andrzej Duda? Yes, of course. And trade is a very important part of our relation, but definitely we could do more as far as business to business cooperation. India, don't forget, is uh, the most, the largest uh, democracy, the most populated country. And it is really a business country. A lot of uh, Indian businesses do fabulously well all over the world. And Poland needs such a partner. So as far as trade and investment, we need much more. As far as other issues, uh, as I said, India just sees in Poland a chance to reopen a chapter with Central Eastern Europe, which has changed considerably during like last 35 years. We are the sixth European uh, economy in the EU, Poland. We are 21st world economy and India sees it. And India also sees the uh, growing role of Poland in the security domain and also at the Eastern flank of the European Union vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine and Russia. In the same time, India's power has grown considerably. India is really a world power today. Uh, it's not only the most populated country, it's also the world fifth uh, world economy, uh, heading towards being number three in few years. India is growing over 6% every year. It's definitely better than uh, China, and it's a new, uh, important player in security and uh, in uh, uh, economy and in politics all over the world, not only in, in this region. So uh, for Poland, India is a very good counterbalance uh, to China. And it's also a very important partner looking at Asia generally, with a lot of Polish businesses, but also Poland as a country could do much more than earlier. But that comes with a little bit of nuance, does it? Or maybe it doesn't. Um, because if we look at the relationship between India and the Soviet Union, India with Russia today, um, India is a little bit closer with Russia than I think we here in Poland would like them to be. Um, and so therefore, is that an issue in, in, in relations between India and Poland? Well, uh, as a Western country, Poland hopes India takes into consideration our concerns. India has good reasons also to cooperate with Russia, earlier Soviet Union. It is a complicated uh, history of independent India after 1947, where, when the um, U.S. also uh, was close to Pakistan and India in the same time was a little bit forced to be closer to Soviet Union, but in the same time, India was 
leading the movement of non-alignment countries, meaning India doesn't want to actually be uh, with anyone. India is a regional uh, superpower, is a subcontinent, and India has, has its own judgment on what is good and what is bad for this country. So uh, we hope India takes into consideration its own interest in seeing the situation from its own perspective, which means that India is always has always been against violence. That's very historically very deeply rooted in India history. And India is against violating international law. And it's very much for multilateral world order. Uh, India wants to be a permanent member in the UN Security Council, by the way, which Poland supports. So India sees itself as an important player and maybe mediator in a larger scale, not only in Asia. So we keep fingers crossed for India to take this role as a democracy. Uh, India is the largest world democracy and this, this democracy is working. So to our understanding, this could bring India to the conclusion that in the uh, issue between Russia and Ukraine, India should take into consideration our point of view, the Western point of view, that it's not acceptable, this kind of imperialistic uh, policy, which uh, Vladimir Putin uh, is, is leading. And in the same time, India has good relations with Russia, which could be used now, at that moment, to uh, moderate uh, Russia's position and to prepare the ground for the future talks to finish off this war. Ukraine has been looking to engage uh, uh, India for uh, ever since the full-scale invasion of the war, and now it's going to get the opportunity to do so. Uh, so from that view, what do you think it is that uh, Kyiv's going to try and convince uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi of when he visits the capital? What greater role can uh, India play in being a bridge builder, a peacemaker, or somehow having a positive effect uh, on the conflict between Ukraine and Russia? Look, it's a consequence of India's growing um, uh, importance and growing power, not only in economic terms, but also in political terms and in security domain as well. India is a leading country in Asia, and with growing power, soft and hard, it's also growing responsibility. So. All the world looks at such countries like India to contribute to the world uh, security and to uh, to the the, the the new architecture of the global order. So uh, India definitely sees its role that way. But the question mark is how India will play, how India will use its potential, um, and in what position India, what position India will take vis-à-vis -vis, uh, not only conflict between Russia. And the West, actually, because it's not uh, the war in Ukraine only. It's not the Russian-Ukrainian war. It's a huge conflict between imperialistic Russian po uh, policymaking and the Western approach to the world global order. So what will be the position of India towards this conflict? And also what will be the objective India as a country will put to itself in order to contribute to this global order. And we strongly believe India can be a very pragmatic uh, moderator. India can engage much more than earlier in the global security architecture. India can cooperate much closer with the Western countries, not only with the US, but also with the European Union. And uh, in this regard, Poland is an important partner for the future uh, as being a key country on the Eastern flank of the EU. And also as being a, a key country uh, which uh, which advocates uh, the world order based on multilateral institutions and the global law. If we look at India's uh, position thus far uh, in the war between Ukraine and, and Russia or this war or this conflict between Russia and the West, as you said, um, India has been mostly kind of a spectator and it's also benefited from uh, very cheap Russian oil that it sucks up in very large quantities. Um, why do you think that India has escaped any kind of condemnation from the West uh, as to kind of, I don't know, enabling Russia, at least economically, uh, by doing business as usual uh, despite the ongoing conflict? Well, uh, first of all, India has to engage more. Uh, 
India realizes that with the power this country is having now, in political terms, in economic terms, also having a very strong prime minister who just uh, um, won elections again for the first, for the third consecutive term. Uh, India needs to engage more. So uh, I think uh, the question mark for the Indian politicians is in what way to engage more, taking into consideration India's interests. Uh, Soviet Union was a good friend for many, many years to India during the Cold War. And India remembers that, and India also uh, has been many, many years that uh, was doing a lot of business with Soviet Union, also in the security domain. It became even dependent on the on, on the supply from uh, Soviet Union as far as weapons, for example. Uh, India was also uh, buying um, uh, oil and gas. So first reaction to the war in Ukraine was to use this moment, just to use this opportunity for India itself. But now, after more, more than two years, the reflection is uh, is coming to Indian leaders that, well, it is uh, it is an important now situation which has to finish. This war has to finish. So India, um, following other important countries, tries that, that how we look at the visit to Kiev, and first also it was a visit of Indian Prime Minister to Moscow, um, and the meetings with Vladimir Putin. So India tries to engage itself finally, which is a good sign, uh, with also a big uh, mandate to mediate. Because, yes, it's true, it has still very good relations with Russia. But the question is, and the, in the same time, uh, we have to realize India is building a very substantial um, potential in cooperation with Western countries. European Union, uh, leading EU countries, the UK, of course, traditionally, and the US, and in larger scale, also with other uh, Western allies, such as Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, uh, Japan. And this is crucial for India, because from Indian perspective, the key threat today is China. And India knows it very well that the approchement between Russia and China, it's not in Indian interest. Um, being friendly with Russia, at the same time, um, India doesn't want Russia to become uh, dependent on China. Because China is next door. So with China, India has several issues, has problems even with the border. And uh, it's not an easy relationship, let's put it this way. So from the Indian perspective now, looking at Indian interest, India has to engage. Uh, because the consequences of the war in Ukraine are, are much larger than it was expected at the very beginning. Okay, well, Margosha Bonikovska, President of the Center for International Relations, thank you very much uh, for joining us today and uh, giving your perspective, point of view. We very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes this edition of World Talks. Thanks for joining us and stay with us for more here on TVP World.